Hi, my friends. If you're here, it means you're a big fan of Rumi's poems and his spiritual wisdom. Today, we're gonna continue reviewing and analyzing one of the most epic poems of Rumi that starts like this. I was all tears, then smiles. I was dead, then alive. The might of love arrived and dead to survive. This is the second episode of analyzing this fantastic poem. If you haven't watched the first episode, please click here. Likewise, if you just want to hear the wise words of this poem by itself, without analysis, click here now. You're the source of soul. I'm the widow's shadow. Because of your glow, I'm now torrid and low. Rumi now praises God, saying that it is the source of all warmth and love, and even the sun gets its light-giving and heating power from God. He also compares himself with the shadow of a willow tree, stating that he exists only because God is casting his power on him, the same way that the shadow only exists because of the sun's glow. He also now considers himself low and down to earth, like the shadow, but also torrid, inflamed, and passionate about receiving and feeling this glow of divine love on his soul. My heart neatly split and found the gleam of spirit. It weaved a new velvet and loathed its old jacket. Now Rumi says that as a result of this awareness, his heart split and opened up to this new spirit that casts its gleam on his heart. What is the new spirit? The divine truth and divine love. As a result, he dumped his old jacket which represents his old destructive ego and he replaced it with a new velvet representing his new well-sown and well-grown ego which is now tightly connected to the divine spirit. At dawn, feeling so proud, the soul's mouth cracked so loud. I used to be a pawn, now a lord on a crown. Now Rumi's soul is so proud of him, and he says his soul's mouth, or his inner voice, tells him, Good job, Rumi, you finally connected me directly to the divine spirit. So from now on, Rumi's soul is not a character to be manipulated by his ego or other egos or other selfish humans for their evil purposes. Rumi is not a pawn or puppet anymore, but he's a strong self-built character who is proud and joyous and he's like a lord on a cloud. The sugar pack praised your endless sweet ways. In your nice embrace, it forever stays. Here Rumi tells God that he's like the paper of a sugar pack and God is like the sugar in it and that God and its divine love is so sweet in many ways that he really likes to stay with him forever. Here Rumi is also implicitly saying that divine love is within every single human the same way that sugar is in the sugar pack. The down soil humbly praised the galaxies of space that it can gain light rays due to your sway and grace. In this verse, Rumi mentions that even the depressed soul praises the galaxies of space, or more specifically, the sun and moon for casting their light on earth very regularly and creating days and nights. And of course, these are all because of God's control and grace over all these galaxies and stars, that they all orbit around each other very systematically. The whole universe Stalls, angels, and goddess, but it's giving a lustrous due to your kindness. Rumi keeps indirectly praising God here, saying that the whole universe, or all these stars and galaxies, also thank God and angels for making them shiny and also giving as they emit their light on all other spatial matters. The sage of God's mystery. He's glad of his victory in being a luminary and disguised top story. Rumi now considers himself a sage because he figured out the mystery of divine creation. And he's so glad and proud of that. And he considers himself a luminous and shining star on the highest story of skies or heavens that can also guide others as a luminary or leading light. Luminary is a very nice word that the translator used here because it has two meanings. One meaning is a guiding light or an inspiration, which is the desired meaning here. 
and the other is a natural light-giving body or a star that fits well in the context. I was Neptune, now the moon, my layered flare, balloon. I was a mystic tycoon, now I breathe a tycoon. Rumi says that before discovering the rules of divine love, he used to be like the Neptune planet, which is so far from the sun, as the main source of life and warmth, and is also not that illuminating. Sun represents God here as the main source of divine love. Now that he discovered the mystery of divine love, he's like the moon that is so close to the sun and is always and continuously reflecting the sunlight or divine love. And as a result of this proximity to the main source of light and awareness, Rumi's potential flair or gifted ability, which is his layered and complicated mysticism, balloons and flourishes. And there is no doubt that this layered flair is within every single one of us. Then he says in the second couplet that yes, he used to be a big shot in the field of mysticism because Rumi even before meeting Shams was really a figure, a famous scholar and so many people would try so hard to go to his sermons and speeches. However, now he's so knowledgeable and close to the source of divine knowledge that he can raise and guide others too to become famous mystics. Son of romance, at us both take a glance, see how your grin danced and made my smile enhanced. Now Rumi calls on God to take a look at them both, so God sees how its lovely grin appearing after seeing Rumi joining the divine house made Rumi also very happy in a way that his smile is turning into a broader smile like God's grin. And you know grin is a broader smile, or figuratively an enhanced smile. Of course, this is all analogy because Rumi has not actually seen God smiling at him, but he could feel that God is happy with him. And because God is happy with him, he is also very happy. Moreover, in Iranian spiritual literature, grin or smile is a sign of something positive flourishing. In this case, Rumi's mystic knowledge is flourishing. Be like flowing chess, mute but full of converse. Because of that king, I'm glad and rapturous. In the last verse, Rumi is tacitly giving himself or other mystics a piece of advice, and he tells himself, It's good now that you're happy because of absorbing and understanding the mystery of divine love, and it's okay if you're so eager to tell everyone about it. But be like a flowing game of chess, mute but full of moves and motions. So Rumi is saying, I have to teach others about divine love with my actions and behaviors, not just talks. It's very very important to know here that Rumi is a pragmatist saint rather than just a preaching saint. In the end, Rumi says because of that king or basically the divinity, he is glad and rapturous as he feels great enthusiasm inside himself because of actually feeling the divine love inside his heart. In the end, I thank you for being with me till the end of this clip. I hope I have taken a small but positive step toward a world full of love and peace. If you like the message of English Rumi in this clip, please do all that good stuff. Like, share and subscribe. Please also hit that bell button so you get notified next time I make a clip about Rumi's poems. As translating Rumi's poem into rhyme English poems takes too long. So by the next time I manage to post a clip, YouTube may not consider feeding my post to all of my subscribers.